Hello to all of you, this is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to understand the fixed effects FPAM or least square dummy variable regression model which includes the cross section and time period effect and we are going to consider their interaction effects. The estimation of the panel data regression model depends on the assumptions we make about the intercepts, the slope coefficients and the error terms. In general, simple linear panel data models can be estimated using three different methods. One, a common constant. Two, allowing for fixed effects. Three, allowing for the random effects. The possibilities of the measurement which can be there in panel data regression model are, we assume that the intercept and the slope coefficients are constant across time and space, and the error term captures differences over the time and individual cross-section units. This is known as a pooled ONS. Kindly refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded the video on how to work on pooled OLS. The next method is the slope coefficients are constant, but the intercept varies over the individuals. So That's an FEM method, fixed effects methods. This video is also uploaded. Kindly refer to my playlist. The slope coefficients are constant, but the intercept varies over individuals and time. The fourth method is all the coefficients, the intercept as well as slope coefficient vary over individuals. It's a fixed effect methods. And the last one is all coefficient, the intercept as well as slope coefficient vary over individual and time. Let us take a very simple example here. I want to see the effect of study time on the test grade, ignoring the intelligence of the student and the test which has been conducted. So when I'm running this type of model, it is known as a normal OLS. Y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus epsilon is an error term. So I believe here that in this ordinary least square model, my test grade is completely dependent on non study time, ignoring the student as well as the type of the test. So test grade is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into the study time plus the error term. Now, if I want to include the intelligence of the students also, so what I'll do is I'll create the dummy variable. For example, wherever Joe student is there, so Joe will be indicated, the presence of Joe will be indicated by 111 and the presence of Sue will be indicated by 111. Similarly, I will do it for Mark also. But remember one thing, we will not do for Antonio because the number of dummies will be always one less than the number of cross-section units or number of students. The reason for this is if we make the dummies for all the cross-section units, then we will fall into the dummy variable trap. So the number of dummies is equal to number of cross-section units minus one. Now here, three tests are there. Can you guess how many dummies will be there? Right, two dummies will be there. So in fixed effects models, for considering the cross-section effect, y is equal to beta zero plus beta one x one plus fi plus epsilon. So my test grade is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into the study time plus beta 2 Joe plus beta 3 Mark plus beta 4 Sue plus epsilon. Antonio has not been included because it becomes the, uh, uh, otherwise if we include the Antonio, we will fall into the dummy variable trap. Now, how we will capture the intelligence of Antonio? It will be captured by the intercept beta 0. Now, we are also including the test here, the time period effect. So wherever test 2 is present, it will be indicated by 1. And whenever test 3 is there, it will be indicated by 1. So the absence of test 2 is indicated by 0. Test 1 will be captured by the intercept. We have already discussed about this matter that number of dummies are 1 less than the number of units. So my time effect model is y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus fi plus tj plus epsilon. So now my test grade depends on study time as well as a student and also the type of the test, test two and test three. Test one is not there because its value will be captured by the intercept. Now I want to make the interaction model. It means that I'm considering the, uh, I'm considering the intelligence of the students with the amount of the study they are doing. So test grade is equal to beta zero plus beta one into the study time plus beta 2 into Joe plus beta 3 mark plus beta 4 Su plus beta 5 test 2 plus beta 6 test 3 plus beta 7 Joe into the study time. The study time of the Joe plus beta 8 mark and its study time plus beta 9 Su and the study time plus beta 10 test 2 study time plus beta 11 test 3 study time. 
So we are creating this type of a model which is known as the interaction model. Why we go for this type of analysis? Because if we consider the pool to LS, we are just generating one regression equation. We know that one size does not fit all. So heterogeneity refers to the firm's specific characteristics and the period characteristics. By pulling all of them together, the firm specific and the time period specific characteristics are subassumed in the error term BIT. This problem is known as endogeneity in which the error terms gets correlated with one of the regressions. So this is not as at all desirable in regression. This causes the estimated regression coefficients to be biased and inconsistent. As a remedy, we take into the consideration the firm and time characteristics in the model to reduce the unobserved heterogeneity. Now, how panel regression evolves? Now, in normal regression, we don't account for the time and the cross section effect. You can see here y is equal to beta 0 plus beta x plus the epsilon, the error term. Now we consider that yit is, is having a time and cross-section regressions also. So yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus epsilon it. But what about the unobserved heterogeneity arising from this term? Because we have not accounted for it. So the epsilon it, the error term, will be disintegrated into three parts. Yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus error term from the time effect plus the error term from the cross section effect plus the epsilon it. So yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus unobserved heterogeneity from time plus the unobserved heterogeneity from the cross section plus epsilon it. So yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus mu t plus omega i plus epsilon it. Mu t is unobserved time dependent error term, factors affecting y that vary with time but not across the firms, example improvement in the conditions. Omega i is unobserved firm dependent error term, factors that vary with firm but are time independent, example location, corporate culture, dividend policy, capital structure policy and board diversity. So yit is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xit plus mu t plus omega i plus epsilon it. So mu t is fixed over cross section but varies with time. Omega is fixed over time but varies with cross section. All coefficients vary across individuals. So here we are going to consider the interaction model. To do this, what we will do, we will create the dummies for the cross section. And these dummies will be multiplied by the independent variable. So y8 is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 d2i plus alpha 3 d3i plus alpha 4 d4i. Three dummies are there for four cross-section units. x2it and x3it are the independent variables which we have considered. Now what we will do, we will multiply d2i with x2it, d2i with x3it. You can see here, which is gamma 1, gamma 2. Now again I will multiply d3 with x2it, d3 with x3it. And then you can see here gamma 3, gamma 4, gamma 5, gamma 6. If you recall, it is exactly like what we had did, done in the example of that test grade. Antonio, that is uh, the student, multiply with its study time. And the test multiplied with the study time. Now, how we can do this in EVUs? Let's see. First of all, you have to create the dummies, which are uh, which I have already discussed in my previous video. Kindly refer how to create these dummies. Okay, so let me open this observation D2, D3, D4, open as group. So there are four cross section units, and I have already explained that the number of dummies will be one less. So D2, D3, and D4. So wherever GM is present, it is indicated by 1. Wherever uh, US is present, it is indicated by 1. And Westinghouse is indicated by 1. Okay. Now I'll generate the new series. That is generate D2X2. Which is D2 into X2. This is a name which I am giving for this. And this is a command. Okay. Then generate D2X3 which is equal to d2 into x3, enter. 
generate d3 x3 is equal to d3 into x3 enter generate d3 x2 is equal to d3 x3 x2 d3 into x2 enter it then only the command will run generate d4 x2 is equal to d4 into x2 enter generate d4 x3 is equal to d4 asterisk x3 so uh, we have generated the interaction model now we want to run it so i'll go here quick estimate equation now i'll specify y c is a constant x2 and x3 are the independent terms which uh, it's just like a pooled ols we are ignoring we are ignoring the fixed effects model but now if you want to include the fixed effects models also so i'll say it is dependent on d2 and d4 cross section element has been included now we allow for the interaction model so d2 x2 is a new term which was generated d2 x3 d3 x2 just a minute d2 x2 d2 x3 then d3 x2 then d3 x3 d4 x2 d4 x3 enter you can see we have got the result at present only x3 is significant and d2 x2 is significant d2 x3 is significant okay now you have to see here that if d2 and d2 x2 if both are significant what will happen see this is a cross section effect multiplied by the interaction effect let us try to interpret this thing what will happen gammas are the differential slope coefficient just as alpha 2, alpha 3 and alpha 4 are the differential intercepts. So these are differential slopes, gamma, gamma 2, gamma 3. Alpha is a is an intercept. Okay. If one or more of the gamma coefficients are statistically significant, it will, it will tell us that one or more slope coefficients are different from the base group. So if any of the gamma, if any of the gamma here is significant, it will tell that this slope is different from the base group. Let us see, is there any gamma different here? Yes, for D2 X2 and D2 X3, as well as D3 X2, the, the gamma is different. Okay, let's proceed further. Now, for example, say B2 and gamma 1 are statistically significant. In this case, the B2 2 plus gamma 1 will give you the value of the slope coefficients of X2 for general models. Let us see B2 and gamma 1. What are they? So this is B2 and this is gamma 1. If both of them are significant, the slope will become beta 2 plus gamma 1. Suggesting that the GM slope coefficient of x2 is different from that of general electric which is our comparison company. If all the differential intercept and all the differential slope coefficients are statistically significant, we can conclude that the investment functions of General Motors, United States Steel and Westinghouse are different from General Electric. If this is the case, we cannot run pooled regression. But there are some limitations of fixed effects models. Introduction of too many dummy variables will lead to the uh, losing the degree of freedom and therefore will not be able to estimate the error function. With so many variables in the model, there is always the possibility of the multi-collinearity. Fixed effects models may not be able to identify the impact of time invariant variables, example, variables such as gender, color, and ethnicity, ethnicity, which are time invariant. The error terms follows the classical assumption since I refers to the cross-sectional observation and T to the time series observation. The classical assumption for UIT may have to be modified. For more videos on panel data regression using eViews, kindly refer to my playlist. I have already uploaded many videos which are related to the panel data regression. Please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the like button. Thank you.